All right, in this video, we're going to show you how you take a latest rage stamp dimple die box and make it a lot easier of an install and dress it up a little bit. All right, here we Quick go. explanation as to why we do this. So latest rage supplies this nut bolt combo to hold this in place. That's fantastic if you're putting in a sand rail or anything where it's completely accessible all the way around. Usually I'm putting these into bus battery areas, which if you're familiar with them to the right, not very accessible if you're trying to get to those back ones. Also in the under the seat of a bus or a bug, I'm sorry, it'd be kind of difficult to get a wrench underneath it and the wrench on top to take it off. So what I do is I use nut certs, nut rivets, whatever you call these things here. You can buy the tool off of Amazon. It's about $39 I paid for this when it comes with the dies that does, I believe, M4 all the way up to M12. So when we add this into that, then you only require one tool from the top to take your battery hole down off, as opposed to needing something on the bottom as well. Another thing I'm going to do is we're going to punch a hole here and here because this is for an Optima. These will be empty spaces. We're going to put M6 nut certs in here. And so it can be bolted from the bottom of the pan. Use a button head for clearance reasons down there. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna need is a 7.6 millimeter drill bit. That is the same size as that nut rivet right there. And that's gonna allow us to push that in to then press it into place with the tool. All right, let's get started. Not everybody has a drill press. Anything I'm doing here can easily be done with a hand drill. Uh, I'm just using the drill press because I have one and it helps me get a better job done. I got my 7.6 millimeter drill bit in here. And it's when you're doing an existing hole, it'll self center on it. As you can see, it ain't it's not requiring too much to make it a bigger hole. And that's it. We're ready for those nut certs to go in here now. Okay, so th this point here, center, is going to be 3 and 9 sixteenths from here to here, center. And then my distance I want the nut cert back here is 3 and 5 sixteenths. So that intersection right there is where I'm going to put my punch, drill my pilot holes, and then use my roto cut to get those out. When using a punch, it's important to get it centered. This is where you're at. Something like this we have some leeway with, but I try to get it as perfect as possible. Okay, we got our two punches. Now we're going to do a two millimeter drill bit to get a pilot hole. And we're going to end up using a roto cut to cut it with. You can use step drill bits if you want. Um, It'd be easy enough to do it either way. I like to use this because I know it fits with a little bit of uh, little bit of clearancing on it. So the nut cert fits really nice and tight inside the box. Because we're doing a two millimeter pilot hole. That two millimeter is going to allow that center of my roto cut to fall into there and not come out. So it really makes it a lot more stable when you're cutting out with these roto cuts. I'm going to finish it with a step drill bit. You can start it with this if you want. I just know a couple of mine here are dead along the way, so I get the majority of it out with the roto cut. If you want your bits to last longer, use a lubrication on them. So we have all of our holes pre-cut for all of our nut certs. We're going to take this box and we're going to scuff it up a little bit with some Scotch-Brite, get all the cosmoline off of it that they ship it with, 
and we're going to put a coat of satin black on it. Just rattle can. I really like the VHG roll cage chassis satin black. Looks really good. And I put the nuts in afterwards because I like the look of the black and the gold next to each other. Makes it look like a little, little touch of detail there. To get the hole the proper size, we had to do just one final step with our unit bit. And a little, another note here, I'm drilling on a Mylar table. This is not steel. This does not ruin my drill bits. So you saw me going through my 2.5. It doesn't get killed by a metal table. It's Mylar we're going into on this one. So I'm only going to use one more step up on the bit. That's it. One step, done. Flip it around. I'll flip it from the other side. Make sure I knock that. That's just to get the stuff off. I also have a deburring tool right here. Pretty simple. Pretty common tool. If you do any sort of metal fabric, I'm sure you own one. I just go in there and I clean them up a little bit. And our nut cert, when it's installed, is going to be coming from the bottom up. Our hardware will be coming from the pan into it, either from the battery tray in a Type 2 or in a Type 1 application, will be coming through the pan. All right, we're going to get this thing prepped and ready to right, paint. For clarification, for that M6 nut cert, I finished it with the 13 30 seconds. That's where we finished that at. And like I said, for my M5 nut cert, the 7.6 millimeter drill bit is the one I used. So finish it with a 13 30 second for your M6 on the base and your M5 to hold the handle on will be a 7.6 millimeter bit. All right, so this is my nut cert tool, nut rivet, whatever you want to call it, and this is a metric set. So you see there, they're sized. That says M6. The one we're using right now for our uppers will be the M5. So we have the M5 Arbor in here. I buy my nut rivets from McFaddendale. I buy them in bulk. You can buy them 100 at a time, and I find that the easiest way to get them. And I have mine separated by size along here. I only have metrics because I work on Volkswagens. So I would not put an American North Standard thread into a VW car. So since we have all the parts here, now I'll set it up to where you can watch me put the nut rivets in. All right, so we're going to put the nut cert onto the tool. The screws on easily like that. You're going to insert the nut cert into your box, you press down, and you just squeeze them together. Once you get resistance, stop. You'll break the tool. It's done what it's doing. It's a very small nut rivet, so you don't need to go banana sandwich on the thing. And that's it. Set yourself, set yourself up for the next one. The nice thing is, with an arbor that's only M5, you can't put the wrong rivet on it. $39 on Amazon, worth its weight in gold. I use this thing all over the vehicle. I use it for mounting breather boxes to flat areas that don't have access to the rear. I use it for mounting breather boxes to fan shrouds. I use it anytime I want to mount something that I don't have access to the backside of. So you saw in the little time lapse, Dean took this off and got it prepped for paint and got it sprayed for me. That's why you're looking at a black box now. Okay, I'm going to bring that over there so you can check it out. So you can 
can see those nut rivets in there. And the advantage of this is, as your handle goes in, we'll have one M5 button head that we'll use a T Allen on to access it. Nothing is needed on the back side. You don't have to hold it with a wrench. You don't have to do anything extra to it. One tool to take it off, boom, and then you pull your battery out nice and easy. So now I got to put the nut certs on the bottom here, and I put those facing upward because we're going to be mounting them from underneath. So we got the M6 bit in there now. Once again, you're putting it on there. You don't need to go crazy with it. All right, this is ready for install now. Obviously you would have inside the vehicle, you'd put this inside there. You'd mark your holes in your tray when you get a situation where you want it and punch them through from the top and your hardware is gonna come through from the bottom on it. So there's the battery box with all our nut rivets installed into it. This is the part number for it, 996120 from Latest Rage. I purchased mine from Butch's Speed Shop locally in town. They're a great local shop owned by local racers, and they keep a lot of this cool stuff in stock to help us out with our builds. So that's a good looking box, dimple dyed. Once you get the Optima in there, looks really slick. It's to avoid situations like this, where you got a floater battery, nothing holding it in place. Way to go, my brother. We got a little TV magic here, showing you one installed, because this is the second one we're doing today. Right there, this inside Andy Finch's gear of Spikes Restoration in the UK. Doing a little bit of work for my boy here in Vegas for his little run around car. But that's a pretty simple thing to do. It looks really neat when it's done you can see by what butchers is charging for them they're not crazy expensive and you put a little couple more maybe an hour hour and a half of effort into it and you have a really slick looking custom box and like i said we use an m5 button head on these one tool to take it out one tool to put the box in no tool needed on the other side ease of operation and there's an example of one installed in my own personal bus. Same method was used. I just didn't use the button heads. I just used regular hex nuts. And you can see a little fuse panel I have on the front. I have a little template that mounts it onto that battery box. And inside there is the fuses for my fan on my cooler, my hard start relay, and my fuel pump. Makes it ease of uh, servicing. If you pop a fuse, it's right there and accessible. But that's another example of it. No floaters in my buses. No floaters.